My name is Kornayna Kok. I'm 20 years old. I skate for a living, pretty much. Uh, skating six years. And uh, yeah, that's it. My name is Kenneth Ringo Shimabu Abram. I'm 20 years old now. I started skating when I was like 14, 13 and a half. When I got into skating, it was like, it was kind of random. My friend had this really heavy board, like a little, I don't know, wasp or something. It's like plastic wheels and stuff. And then we saw some ads on TV of some guys ollieing. And at the time, we didn't know that YouTube existed. Like, we had no idea about YouTube. So, we didn't have anybody to teach us. We all just decided, okay, we'll skate one board and we all just learned how to ollie on one deck. Then my cousin was skating and she quit, so she gave me her old board. So we were basically guessing how to ollie for like six months until one of us got it and I was like, dude, check this out, man. Here's how you do it. And then we all learned. When I started in, in, in Henty's, there was nothing to skate. There was like a little two stair and just roads. That was it. No stairs, no ledges, nothing. And, uh, no. If you like something, you just keep doing it, I guess. The rain we skated was kind of sucky, I'd say. It's like lots of rough streets and pavements. So like, I can le learn how to ollie and stuff like this high, and like, little drains and stuff. Yeah, and we had really bad boards as well. So you had to learn how to kick like, really hard. You'd kick like as hard as you can, put your feet in the board and you'd roll like two meters. And then you stop. So, yeah. Very depressing. Um, number one, the streets will eat your wheels up. Like the streets are too rough. Like you'll find like a couple good spots with good ground, like very smooth ground. And we also don't have like recreational spots like skate parks and stuff to skate at. There are not too many spots to harbor skateboarding in the I can count with my hands how many spots I've skated here. It's like skating in the same spot forever. You don't get any motivation from that. You're just like it's sad. It's still a pretty ignorant, you know, view on skateboarding that it's just vandalism. If you're skating on the street, you'll get hooted at people like tell you get off your board, what the hell are you doing? Kind of thing. What is they still like, what is this thing? This plank, you know, there's no place for this. And then often you'll get caught and then They'll be like, why don't you go skate somewhere else? And we're like, where do we skate? There's like, there's one park. Okay, fine, we don't have anything else. But we're not trying to damage anything here. We're not smoking weed at your, your place. Yeah, they just chase us away and then people are really aggressive about skateboarding. And in Namibia, you know, the perception of skateboarding here is just quite different. We here, they don't even consider it like as a sport or as a hobby or something to do people just some people might when they see you skating it's like oh they'll look at it like oh my god I've never seen someone do that and then some people will look at it with an eye of what are you doing with your life you know that's not going to bring you any anything in your life or any so that's how people look at skating here but oh and police Police kick us out everywhere. Skating here is really weird. It's like on and off. Like one day there'll be no cops, and then you come the next week and suddenly you're going to jail. Like they'll come, they'll take you. One day they came and took us, and you know, they said that we were vandalizing the property, breaking windows and stuff, and they were gonna lock us out. And like luckily my dad came because I called him while we were in the back of the squad class, like, hey man, like they're trying to arrest us. They're saying that we broke windows, but we didn't do anything. We were just skating. You know, some days it's like that, some days you gotta run because cops here in Africa, sometimes they get aggressive. Like, one time one of my friends got punched and the guy, one guy got out of the car with a gun and he just like shoved it in his face. He's like, how can you skate here? What the fuck is wrong with you? Do you know who I am? I'm a cop. No, he didn't even say he was a cop. He just punched him 
And then after all that, he said, he's a cop, come with me. Like, we thought we were gonna get killed or mugged by some gangster. And it turns out to be a cop. Like, shit like that happens sometimes. Everywhere you go, it says, no, you can't skate here. Everywhere you go. So you're forced to skate in this, either in this small skate park, where there's not enough space, or you just go skate at a parking lot in, your, in where you live alone. There's no motivation at all. Back then, we, were, we would have uh, skate sessions in town every Sunday in municipality. And back then, the, the cops didn't really you know, give us problems that much. But nowadays, it's a lot harder because every spot that we go to skate to, you know, we end up getting chased away. So nowadays, everyone just skates here at the skate park. Christian, you have to love kids as well, because you know Jesus loved them. Uh, when people came, and especially my son-in-law, when he said, Dad, we need to do something, I said, okay, tell me what to do. I want to do something. And then he gave me that idea, and he went on the internet, got the drawings, got all the information, and then uh, we started. You know, we were very excited when, when kids responded, and like, especially kids whose families are broken, like there's only a mom and no dad, and we have quite, quite a few. We had a skate park, uh, I mean um, a camp. We had 20 kids on the camp. It was fantastic. 15 didn't have a father. So we had a great camp and that showed us there's a great need and the need also for a father figure. It's still a work in progress. A lot of the stuff isn't properly built. Because this is our first like proper park, I guess. But it was definitely a stepping stone because like we never had anything before this, so we didn't know, like we couldn't progress, we didn't have places to practice grinds and stuff. The only other place which was open before this, I didn't even skate it. I just heard there was another church that opened a place and you know, people started doing bad things like drugs or something and fights broke out at this park so they closed it. So yeah this is really, it's, it's a nice change, it's like safe, it's like relatively well maintained, it could be better, you know we could have people who actually know how to skate designing the ramps and stuff, we have cracks in weird places but uh, yeah I like this park. a couple of years down the line we met some skaters and heard that there was a camping shop which sold skate stuff because the guy's son was a skateboarder so this guy used to import boards and like sell them from the camping shop. The skateboarding products, like you, <coughs> you go into a skateboarding store here, <laughs> like there's only a few selection of companies you can, you can choose. They don't give you a variety of selections. So it's like you're forced to choose, you're either going to skate DCs, Vans, you're going to skate Element, um, Reverb, Revolution, or what's that other South African company, KEF, KFD. It's sad man, it's like, <laughs> it's very also boxy, you're being limited, in, you're being limited in so many different ways. I used to skate consistently. You'd skate a board for a month, month and a half, and then it's done. Here, I buy a board and I have it for three months to five months. That doesn't make sense. There's a store in the mall. Like, their stock is really old. And like, their decks have pressure cracks in them. And you go there, you look at them, and like, maybe, you know, sometimes you'll make the mistake, like, I made the mistake and I bought a board from there, though. I didn't even know how old it was, but it looked unscatable. Two days, 
going. It's like really expensive. It costs like 750 to buy just a deck and then you need to buy trucks and stuff so poor people really can't afford it. So you have to give hand-me-downs to them or something, you know, and give your board over and stuff. It's really tough because we don't have sponsors. We don't have anybody to give away goods, let's say. If this kid is showing potential and we give him something. Yeah, I'd say it's really expensive here. Really expensive. But a lot of people here still don't know about this park. We don't really get word around that well. And a lot of guys think that they're fine just skating on the street outside their house. I don't think they're really serious about it. Because nobody really understands here what skateboarding can be about. I think they just think it's like, you know, you can't do anything with this. It's just like a bicycle. You can just use it to get from A to B. As opposed to actually learning tricks and learning discipline and like eventually getting sponsors or something, you know, move to another place, you get sponsors, you can do so much with skateboarding. I can't really comment about the other people, but I can comment how like most of my friends feel about me skating. Well, they sort of feel as if it's, you know, it's an immature type of thing to be doing. It's, you know, it's for kids. You know, I'm old, I'm like 20 now and I still skate. My friends are like, ah, oh, dude, you're 20 and you still skate. But what, what's up with that? But yeah, see that's also again because there aren't that many skaters. What's the problem that you skate here? It's Sunday afternoon, Titan Advent, and I actually find it very disturbing. I don't want you to make this noise, I'm sorry. Government says that, I don't know, when we... Apparently there have been several... Um, what do you call those things? Petitions. Mm -hmm. Petitions that people have signed about for skate parks, but government really doesn't do anything. Or they'll say, okay, here's land. They, they'll actually give us land. But then they'll say like, okay, but you have to pay this much and then you have to build at this time. But then none of us have 1.5 million NAM dollars, which is like 150,000 US. We don't have that money. It's really hard to get people to let go of their money for skateboarding. With the young generation, I guess the only way they can stay motivated is if they all keep skating together. When you skate together as a group, then you'll forever keep skating, you'll never really stop. Because much more, so much more, you know, it's a better experience than just skating alone. Back then, there were, there were a lot more skaters. Like, back then, people skated more, because, you know, everyone, the, the, the skate session was sort of like, sort of like a culture, you know. But now, now the skate session is starting to die out, you know, people don't really come to the session anymore. I think it's because of, I think it's because of mostly us getting chased away from the police. You know, people, when most skaters lose like motivation, most skaters just start quitting. Also, because we don't have like skate facilities here. I mean, this is the only skate park we have, and it's like it's so small. Younger kids always want to learn. They always want to learn, especially skating. Like even uh, kids that don't skate, when they see you skate, they want to try what you just try to do. Um, as far as youngsters here, I say there's only there's a couple of kids. But there's one that's my favorite, Gordon. And that kid's the he, he is the future of the movement skateboard. Yeah! I've seen a lot of potential with the skaters here. And I'm not even just trying to be positive, I really think, I legitimately think that people can do something here because I've seen a lot of potential and people really go for it here. Even without, there's no chance of getting sponsors but the really good skaters are doing it because they love it. They know they might not really get anywhere but they really, they put their balls out there and take some hard slams so I think that passion is going to drive future generations to carry on. To be frank, the summarized version is we really need help. Honestly, we need help like to expand the scene because as much as we try and do anything, we don't have capital. We're more like, you know, the, we're here, we're locals, we're the customers almost, but as much as we want to, we can make movements, but I mean, I think also we need a lot more like sponsors. I don't know, the Americans tend to send boards to typical American, I mean, 
sorry, African countries like Ethiopia, because you know, use boards, they'll send there. Because that's the picture of Africa. Nobody really thinks about Namibia because Namibia is just kind of there. But I think if we get more like free equipment here to give to the kids and stuff and push that, we'll definitely get more demand and then we can build a bigger park. So. Skateboarding can grow here, most definitely. Something can always grow because it, the community, the skateboarding community here is very small. And so we can always, we can always expand. Because number one, we don't even have a lot of skate parks, a lot of skate spots to skate. So once we bring in like more facilities to harbor skateboarding, then, then you'll see an evolution of skateboarders and you'll see the skateboarding community grow. I definitely see a bright future for skateboarding as a whole in the world and for me I want that to be a big thing here in Namibia. I definitely want something to happen here and yeah I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it's gonna happen. Yeah, thanks. If you're dedicated to what you're doing then then you can definitely get somewhere. If you give 100%, you'll make it. If you don't make it, you didn't give 100%, I guess. That makes sense, some way or another. So I think that if kids here just keep skating, Wilton, Watsi, you can to my left. If they just keep skating, they'll get somewhere. They just have to try verily hard. That word, verily, they may be represent. Look if the light is still on. Yeah. Okay, press one of the, the arrows quickly. Press one of the arrows, not the start button, one of the arrows. Okay, make sure that the green light is burning. Is the green light burning? Okay, when I say yes, you press it and you make it go red. Insane. Okay, press it. Don't let your dream die. You can do amazing things if you follow your dream. God bless you.